We're taking a peek into geek culture and sharing our top 10 fandom favorites. Let Your Geek Side Show presents Geek Culture Countdown. Hey guys, this is Kitty. And this is Susan. And we're coming to you live from the Sideshow Studios in sunny California. Welcome back to the Geek Culture Countdown. Today we're stitching together our list of the top 10 costume changes in DC Comics. From caped crusaders to men in tights, the superhero fashion of DC Comics has gone through some crises and some rebirths. We've sorted through the closet of some famous costumed crime fighters to bring you the best outfit updates recorded on the comic book page. Listen along to find out which DC Comics metahumans and more took their looks from zero to hero with a quick costume change. Let's get started. It's so funny to it, like tackle DC comic uh, uh, costume changes because there's a lot more history, so they change their costumes a lot more often. Yes. So you almost have to go through like a little bit of the evolution of what they look like as opposed to like this one iconic costume change made all the difference. Yeah. It was really difficult to kind of pin down, at least for some of my characters, which one was actually like the costume change. I agree. And and because we did the Marvel one so recently as well, I was approaching this like it would be a, a quick like this costume led directly to this slightly better costume. But this, yeah, like you said, this one went through, well, they took the the sleeves off of this costume and then they did this, but then yeah. the modern age happened, but then this event happened. And yeah, it's so they totally... go through a lot more costume changes. And then especially, w- especially with events, because I was noticing a couple of mine even recently that's like, oh, they had a different costume in both Blackest Night and Brightest Day. And, I, then, and, of those and I was like, <sighs> but uh yeah that that happened but uh so i guess let's just let's do this list thing Alrighty. right I think okay you've got the first one okay uh oh wow i do uh number 10 on this list actually to be honest this one had the least amount of costume changes and i think it had to do with the fact that batman is so iconic so number 10 <laughs> on the list is batman and for a very long time he was in a gray suit and either a black or blue cape a yellow belt for some reason because because like he's so dark that he what needs a bright yellow belt to be seen, um, and then black trunks. He upgraded not even at all really, besides like getting a little bit of armor and a storyline here or there. But he upgraded in the ninety, well I guess nineteen eighty nine with the Burton films was the first time he actually like really significantly changed his costume because it was always some sort of variation of like gray with black or gray or light blue since, you know, the 66 show with the trunks and the cape. Then um, he had a return to the trunks, but they were blue trunks instead of black trunks. So it was like kind of, I know what the trunks changed. So then that was a little bit closer to the 66, but the new 52 was when they took away his trunks and gave him a way more armored look. And then he got even more armored during rebirth. So he went from like, like spandex and trunks and capes to like armored looking. And then now he did another upgrade recently where he's actually wearing no clothes. So (laughs) Batman uh, damned uh, showed off all of Batman in his, uh, as he was meant to be seen, I guess. And then that's kind of the evolution of Batman. But for, for a caped crusader who's been around since the thirties or whatever, Mm-hmm. He sure didn't change his clothes very often. It made it made, actually made me shocked. Yeah, and I mean, um, for listeners, we're disregarding um, like Batman Beyond because we've right. got some Be- different well, versions I mean, of yeah, ter- Terry's a different character. Right. I was mostly uh, we're going with like Bruce Wayne. Yeah, and there's been artist variation of like how high are the points on his cowl, but yeah, um, yeah, I I think for the large part he does stay the stay same. the same. But the addition of armor into the bat suit mm-hmm. um, is pretty interesting. For sure. Yeah. So number nine on our list is Green Arrow. And the, the Emerald Archer has definitely had some drastic changes yeah, um, over the so. years. <laughs> uh, one thing is consistent, though. He always lives up to his namesake by incorporating green into the costume. Um, originally, like, very Errol Flynn, men in tights, totally. Robin Hood, uh, I love his facial hair. Oh, I love like, the I love <laughs> Ollie with the facial hair. Yes. You got to have Ollie with the facial hair. But over the years Oliver Queen has had some more toned down looks and and the changes haven't been as radical to his costume, but with the introduction of the Arrowverse on the CW, um he got a much more kind of kind of exciting in line with the vigilante tone um upgrade while still maintaining uh Obviously, the green style and and paying some uh, homage to 
to his classic looks. I like the hood. Uh, yeah. So like he's the got a, the domino mask and the hood. Um, he has a two-toned green jacket, kind of like a leathery jacket, um, shoulder covers and arm guards. And, uh, of course, as the seasons go through, um, some of the characters in the Arrowverse get costume upgrades. So he went uh, sleeveless for a while, and then he uh, covered his arms back up, and he's got like a full, kind of like a moto jacket kind of yeah, deal. Yeah, Ollie, Ollie went sleeveless for a while, too, in the comics as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and he's had the hood in the comics and stuff, mm-hmm. but but especially the evolution to the live action Arrow, which, oh my goodness, it's the end of an era on the CW because Arrow is bowing out with its final season this fall. So <gasps> it's it's in a, in a season right now, and it got renewed for one more. It's going to be a shorter season. And as fans know, it kind of lines up with their plans to do uh, Crisis on um, Infinite Earths. Oh, that's kind of fantastic. So people are thinking that's going to be Green Arrow's big finale while they're shaping up to introduce like Batwoman and stuff. So It's really exciting. That. So Green Arrow is number nine on our list. Speaking of green, many folks forget that in her first appearance, Catwoman was green. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I remember she was. The, the purple, but the I don't purple came green. after the green. She wow. was in a green dress first. And that's something that like most people forget about her. Huh. Um, so she moved on to her purple dress. And uh when Selena Kyle was first kind of introduced, she had more kind of 40s looks to her where they were definitely dresses, definitely had like the curly um, 40s looking hair and then the cat mask and she always had the whip. But um, like that's kind of crazy to think about. She started in green, moved on to purple. Since then, she's mostly been a black cat since uh, the 19... 19- 60s show with a brief callback to the purple days in the 80s and 90s then uh she was in the best costume which was a gray cat during batman the uh, animated series yes. <laughs> I was like, that's my one? opinion obviously which my is the best one my opinion um and then batman returns gave her that shiny leather look that she's kept in some variation of shape or form since then they've taken away kind of the tim burton stitches given her a set of goggles and i love those goggles i love the goggles too and those were very like darwin cook crooked little ta- crooked little streets yeah um that was like the iconic um kind of re renewal of her costume so she's pretty much stayed in that in that costume since then the zip up the cowl the goggles and that's Catwoman. she went from like dresses that's what i always i'm like you fought crime in a dr- or not fought crime she was a thief back then you were like a thief in a dress <laughs> which i guess is you know very 40s of her right mm-hmm. anyway so number eight on our list is Catwoman. And number seven on our list is continuing in our theme of green, (laughs) even though uh, Gotham's green goddess Poison Ivy didn't always have her literal green thumb. Uh, When she debuted in Batman 181, she was based on pinup model Betty Page. Oh, Um, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah, she was based on Betty Page. Um, She had the kind of like the uh, the bob cut red hair. She wore a wreath of ivy, um, but she had uh, tights and and a green bodysuit. And so... She kind of looked like a a mixture of Peter Pan and a little bit of a hula dancer because she had some, like, grass bracelets Mm -hmm. and stuff. So it was a very interesting debut for her. Um, But as she evolved as a character, um, she began to take on more plant-like elements and kind of became more wild and untamed and um, natural. And then as we see, like, especially famously with um, Jim Lee's design in Batman Hush, uh, she took on the green skin and... Her costume was replaced by plant-like elements. So, um, and there have been some, like in the new Fifty Two, she went back to not being green, and now it's like she can change whether she's green or not because of the chlor- chlorophyll. chlorophyll. Yeah, chlorophyll. I think it's like oh. chlorokinesis or something they call it oh. um, in her body. But um, but specifically, green poison ivy with the bright red hair, covered in strategically placed leaves and vines. <laughs> She always has something living and growing around her, and that really brings her back to that that state of, like, I am nature and I'm speaking yeah. for nature. Um, She's very Demeter. Yes, and mm-hmm. it's 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 a much more popular uh, iteration than just wearing green tights in yeah. a bodysuit. Um, so, yeah, so our green-skinned Poison Ivy, who's a little more uh, at touch with her wild side, is number seven on our list. 
Number six on our list rounds out the sirens. <laughs> we didn't mean to put them in a row, but it kind of just happened. Uh, Harley Quinn started on Batman the Animated Series wearing a spin on a traditional Harlequin outfit that kind of had like a superhero villain type flair to it. It was very, very clown-like, though. Um, I guess her alternate outfit in the animated series would have been like the Harleen Quinzel, like actual doctor coat and psychologist look. But really the next shift came for her in the Arkham games where she embraced another type of medical background <laughs> with a nurse look of sorts, if you want to call it that. <laughs> um, it's definitely what a lot of uh, spirit Halloween stores would have you <laughs> buying because it's a really cute little sexy Halloween type esque outfit, very clown, very nurse, very Harley. Um, she usually has um, corsets nowadays uh, that have pa and, and usually pants always with the a variation of either black and red or blue and red. Um, and of course, the signature diamonds. Nowadays, she has landed in some cute little short shorts blue and red, uh, and a daddy's little monster shirt for the look in Suicide Squad. So that's pretty much the evolution of Harley. And um, I don't know. I feel like everyone has their own favorite version of Harley because she had like that roller derby look for a while. Yeah. It was like the Amanda Connor. Was it Amanda Connor? Yeah, yeah. Look? Yeah. That was... Um, and then her comic book Suicide Squad yeah. look had more of the blue and red. And then she's had a cowl. She's or had like a headpiece. She's not had a headpiece. She's dyed her hair to match what it would look like because she's had black and red hair. But most of the time she's portrayed as a blonde. So And now there's old lady Harley now, with a buzz cut <laughs> old lady harley has a buzz cut i really like roller derby harby heart roller derby harley yes she's really cute yeah and then there was harley it was harley and her gang of harleys yeah and there were a bunch of other uh people who who had like a, a black and different color version of her scheme mm -hmm. and so you got like a whole rainbow of oh that's her, rad her goons and stuff and also of course Bombshell Harley. Bombshell Harley. That's which is really, one. and of course, all the sirens got a really cool bombshell makeover themselves. So, number six on our list is Harley Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, now that we're finished with these sirens, we're jumping back to the Trinity with number five. Number five on our list is Superman. So, as with many DC Comics characters, Superman got quite a radical new look in the new 52 relaunch. Actually, he had like several. Um, I was trying to pin down which one came at which time, but it was kind of all over the place. Um, there was the dismissal of his red trunks. There was the straight up jeans and a t-shirt Superman whose cape kind of looked like it shrunk in the wash as well. And then he got <laughs> armor. I liked when when he had that cape because it looked it looked like a kid playing Superman. Yes. It did. Yeah. It was Oh, and that and that shirt was practically painted on. Oh him. yeah, no, that shirt was super tight, but it did look like a, a, a kid who was like, I'm gonna be Superman today and like put on a cape and was like Yay! Nothing says truth, justice, in the American way like a <laughs> pair of uh, denim jeans and combat boots. Uh -huh. um, and so, as we continued past the New 52, we got to DC Rebirth, and then we got the momentous announcement that Brian Michael Bendis was leaving Marvel after 17 years at the House of Ideas, and he was jumping over to DC, and he was taking on Action Comics number 1000. And so, with the arrival of Action Comics number 1000, the Man of Steel got his red trunks back, and that was that almost as big if not bigger, a headline than Bendis joining DC. Oh, I, I, I think I saw them equal in my social media feed. And this, yeah, but I mean. To be honest, I was very happy that the trunks came back. The, the trunks, trunks are, are very Superman. Yes, because without the trunks, he had like, he also had both a red and a yellow belt during the New 52, but it just looked like there was something missing because it's oh, yeah. just a belt holding nothing. It was like a lot of, it was a lot of blue. And I like blue. It's like one of my favorite colors. Yeah. But there's but there, there needed was, to be something. There was to just break a lot the, of blue. <laughs> yeah. Well, and interestingly enough, before Bendis came in to do the um Superman Reborn storyline, which led into um Action Comics number one thousand, the trunks themselves had actually been written out of continuity. Like retroactively, DC stated Superman has never worn these trunks. And there was some stuff because there were a couple of Superman who got, like, Superman got split into two different right. people, blah, blah, blah. But, like, straight up, they wrote out of the continuity, he never wore these trunks. Disagree. So, um, he wears trunks. Yes. He loves trunks. And the famous Crimson Underoos are returned uh, as of the Superman Reborn storyline. And, and that was a def definitive, he has worn these, he has always worn these. And more than just a fashion choice, this, the excitement over these trunks really also represented a, 
the excitement over a return to a more familiar uh, Superman storytelling be- because the jeans and the T-shirt just weren't the same Superman. And, and yeah. the fact that Superman had split into two identities. I feel and- like they tried to make Superman cool. And not that Superman isn't cool, but Superman's like the He's not cool in that way. Yeah, he's not cool he's not, as like a cool guy. Because it felt like Superman was trying to be like your cool dad. Like, <laughs> right? He, he's in touch with the kids, Superman. Like, but and but Superman's cool because he has all these powers and he's strong and he does the right thing. Not because like, like, hey guys, I baked you some chocolate chip cookies out of kryptonite. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> out of kryptonite. I, I no, I don't know how that would work. That's but, not a very cool dad. No, but <laughs> that's what I mean. Well, the kids aren't allergic to kryptonite. That's true. He just was trying to be a cool dad, so he wanted to like tone down his powers with little kryptonite cookies. I don't know. Anyway, that's That's not the Superman storytelling <laughs> I was talking about. Exactly. So, Brian Michael Bendis brought back traditional Superman, truth, justice, the American way. And red under ruse. Red under ruse. So uh, (laughs) Superman is number five on our list. Number four on our list is someone who I did not realize how often she's changed clothes. Wonder Woman, to be honest, has upgraded and changed so often that it was hard to choose a specific time or to even kind of like sum it up uh, in a little bit of a like a short paragraph. So we could do a special edition podcast that's just about her changes. So when she started, she was in a skirt, kind of like a dress that was like, um, that had all the stars on it. And she looked like that. Then she moved on to some rock and hot pants. Love the hot pants. Love the hot pants. Then she went into a full swinging 60s spy look in 1968, which was all white with a gold belt. She looked very, very like, 60s you know she had like the the big hair and the headband and like the sunglasses turtleneck like like white turtleneck white pants gold belt she looked very 60s (laughs) so that was pretty great and after that she wore what is considered to be her most iconic outfit that has the wonder woman wings on the corset as well as the stars on the hot pants she didn't do a whole lot of massive deviation from that look for a while until they gave her full pants in 2010 but she is also one of the people that went back and forth from like she had a star sapphire look and then a blackest night look and then a brightest day look. And that like, so there's so many times she changed clothes in a matter of like, like a couple months and then a couple months. And so it's, I don't know that those would count as iconic changes though. Also she did have full armor and full golden wings in flashpoint um, when she was in an alternate timeline and was a warrior. Nowadays, she mostly matches the movie look, which is a gladiator looking skirt and her armored corset with the WW. I really like the the modern skirt. I really do like the modern skirt as well, though there is something about those hot pants with the stars. <laughs> the I, hot, like the 90s with the hot pants and then like the motorcycle jacket and then like the corset. Yeah. It's just like, mm, that's- that, that was a good one too. There is a whole <laughs> other like set of these where I guess in the new 52, she actually only had had like two stars that were like one on each hip and that was like really? the big difference yeah because she went from pants to like just two stars and that was like the cliff chang look i was gonna say yeah. i like the cliff chang the cliff look. chang look is really cool so take a look at that the next time you see it because there's only matt, like matt wilson colors yeah there's <laughs> it's um like a darker shade of navy blue and then only like a couple stars in like mm. on places they're mostly around like the belt line but it's not full stars wow yeah so wonder woman has changed costumes a lot which is why she is number four on our list Well, speaking of stars, number three on our list is Starfire, who is more or less notorious for her costumes. I'd uh, say so. As a Tamaranian whose powers come from the absorption of ultraviolet radiation, it makes sense that historically Starfire doesn't wear a whole lot of clothes. Um, I can only describe her original costume as as affectionately as possible. It's floss. It just looks like floss. (laughs) It is a a V costume that meets at her waist with a... um, with a very, um, it's like, I guess it's a belt and then like a little bikini bottom. Um, sort but, of a bikini bottom. Sort of a bikini bottom. That, that's a little generous. Um, yeah. But she's also known for her, of course, massive hair that literally transitions to fire at the base. Um, and then she's always had dainty purple boots. Um, so I that, like her boots. She has mad boot game. She has really cool boots. And of course, I grew up with um, the Teen Titans animated series, the original one. And so... Going to the comics and finding out how different Starfire's costume was was a big shock. But um, 
This got progressively worse and worse <laughs> as time went on to the uh, often derided and, and just not – not many people are a fan of uh, 2011's Red Hood and the Outlaws. It got so bad that she had nothing on her torso except for pasties. Um, I read that. Please don't tell me you love it because I'll be really embarrassed. I don't love it. <laughs> okay. But I did read it in order to like, like it was a spite read where I needed I needed to be able to discuss it mm-hmm. properly. I Yeah, I had a friend who was like, I was like, oh, I really love Starfire. And she's like, don't read Red Hood and the Outlaws. Yeah, see, I didn't have any affinity for any of the characters in it, which is why I could read it and therefore be able to, you know, talk about it. Yeah. And and so this was also the series that famously gave her the bikini clad hair flip. Um, there's a lot of really infamous comic panels from Red Hood and the Outlaws. Uh, just di- Floss is not even a correct way to describe what she was. She was what little nude. she was. Yeah, she was basically nude. <laughs> she was. Um, nude. It was. It was essentially with Starfire a game of uh, chicken being waged with the censors of DC Comics on mm-hmm. the comic book page. It was insane. But, but then, <laughs> but then, uh, the Princess of Tamarin got her own solo series, and she was redesigned by Amanda Connor, who also had a hand in redesigning uh, some of Harley Quinn's modern looks. Yep. Um, so Princess Coriander got a bit more material material to her outfit. She had a tasteful cropped purple shirt that accompanied. Uh, slightly larger bikini bottoms mm-hmm. they're like kind of like bikini briefs yeah um they're not full on full on pants but she had white gloves and white piping all over her shirt the shirt was of course um designed with like cute cold shoulder she had a like a yeah. opening above the chest not quite power girl status but she had plenty of ways she could still absorb the sun for her powers and then her um thighs were still exposed and she had the knee high purple boots she looks like a go-go dancer. Yes. It was like a really cute go-go dancer look. Really cute. And DC Collectibles did a fantastic little statue of the the pose from the um, the first issue where she's like turning up her hand and she's got her um, green solar energy mm-hmm. flaring out. And it was just it was just a nice way to show that she can still absorb the sun and have cute like off the shoulder, like cold shoulder. I open. Mean, she can still be sexy not without not wearing clothes. Like, yes. Like she, like I said, she looked like a cute go-go dancer who was like definitely having fun, being cute, but like still could absorb the sun, still could use her powers, but yeah. So Starfire for her um, radical, radical um, declothing and then sudden reclothing, courtesy of Amanda Connor, uh, is number three on our list. So number two on our list, probably at least for mine, has the most radical costume change. This was, and this was like this one. This was, was like, this, this one was on the like list. the jumping off point. <laughs> From this list. So deep V's. How do you feel about deep V's, Kitty? How deep are we talking? We're talking deep. These are very deep V's. Are we in the era of disco? We are, actually, because Nightwing uh, debuted. And during his first few years as the hero Nightwing, this is post-Robin, um, he wore the deepest of deep V's <laughs> um, along with some massive, like, I don't know how else to call them except, like, shoulder cone collar type things that shot out of the top of the deep V. Yeah. Well, and then he also had the massive like neck collar. Yeah, the neck collar. Very like dead man, but yeah, but like blue, but blue, powder blue, but also gold. He had powder blue and gold. That's the colors Nightwing started with. Then he evolved and traded up for a blue and gold suit that had like kind of, um, (laughs) It looks like embroidery or like like patterning where the deep V used to be. It's almost like the colorist or like the the penciler was like, you know what? We're just going to like put some pattern right here where this V is too deep. And like that's going to be the rest of the costume. So that was his first transition. And I think the color scheme was supposed to be Batman-esque, mm-hmm. you know, because it was like the kind of powdered blue, that blue gray that Batman was. And then the yellow of the, v. like, utility belt yeah, style. Yeah, the yellow, but it was also, like, where the deep V would be. He then upgraded to his black and blue cat suit. That's the, like, all-black one with the, like, kind of W for Nightwing theme pattern. Yeah. It's, like, um, that he had, uh, and he still wears that today, even though he had a brief dabbling in red <laughs> during <laughs> the New 52, but he's back in blue. Uh <laughs> That's kind of cool. And that is where he is staying for now. And I mean, you can't have Nightwing not be in that color scheme. And that is a fantastic costume because it allows him to it allows him to fight crime slightly better than having a having a disco yeah. suit. And it it also, you know, 
famously shows off his assets. I was just going to say, I'm like, I'm I like, like we I can't want to talk about the costume without can, talking you about You can't talk Nightwing. about Nightwing without talking about the assets. <laughs> He He has a very nice physique. He does. And he did, you know, gymnastics and Mm -hmm. he was in the circus for years, the Flying Grayson. So he he worked for that physique. Mm -hmm. And now he wants to show it off. And you know what? God bless him. Let's let's let him do that. (laughs) He worked hard for that body. So number two is Nightwing. I like this list because as we're going up, I'm like, well, we got all the Trinity and we got all the sirens. Um, We got an odd uh, green arrow just hanging out there. Um, but the top three are a very famous kind of love oh, they triangle. They kind of are. I didn't even here. realize that. Yeah, and so where we had Starfire and uh, Dick Grayson, number one on our list is Barbara Gordon, Batgirl, and of yeah. course we've talked at length about how much we love what I I consider the like crowning achievement of her costumes. Mm-hmm. I mean, again, especially with the Bat family, a lot of them undergo a lot of costume changes, and she's. She had a similar thing with Batman where she kind of just changed slightly with the eras. We did have purple for the live action, and then we had some future costumes that incorporated purple. And then we had the Batman and Robin Batgirl, which was like way out in left field. But at least they didn't give her nipples like they gave everybody <laughs> else for that movie. Let's, let's, <laughs> let, let's thank them Th- for that. Thankful for small blessings. Yeah, small blessings. Um, but, of course, and, and even now, um, since the... Since the costume that I'm about to allude to, they've redesigned her again where they've given her like a harness uh, for her, like her cape is like a harness type They definitely just have deal. made her more practical throughout they the They have, but I think nothing is so strong as the 2014 Batgirl of Burnside, which was uh, from artist Babs Tarr working with writer Cameron Stewart. I mean, this this is for a, a I, I want to say teenage, but she was also college age. For like a college age superhero for the modern sensibility, Batgirl of Burnside was such a fabulous costume, not only in its design and, and aesthetic, but its practicality for her as a superhero. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, a, there's a full actual like breakdown sheet um, that the artists, uh, Babs Tar. Amazing. I mean, we also brought her up in our, our Batgirl podcast yeah, itself. Because we love her. She's so fantastic. Um but they they were really smart uh, in designing her outfit. It features a um, purple leather jacket, so it's not just like a whole one piece um, kind of kind of motorcycle jacket with the um, yellow Batgirl logo. She has um, purple leather uh, kind of style leggings with a matte black stripe down the side. She's got her little combat boots, Doc Doc Martens. They're Doc right? Martens, um, and they're yellow Doc Martens, and you can get them. Oh, so cool! Yeah. Um, and then I learned. Based on this breakdown sheet, her gloves have snaps on and off, mm-hmm. so that's pretty practical. And then her cape also snaps on and off. And then she's got the, of course, the black on the outside, uh, yellow on the inside, scalloped Bat Family cape. And this this is just just such a stylish design. It's super functional. It really represented the fact that this was a slightly younger, um, not naive, but I guess a little like a little more youthful and energetic Barbara Gordon than totally. we'd seen for a while. But it, she still acknowledged a lot of the things about her past, and it was just it was just super fun. But it kept the Batgirl spirit. It kept that that evolutionary spirit of the costumes. Why they even upgrade in the first place? It's because the times are changing, and so I just I think yeah, nothing. Batgirl of Burnside is the perfect example yeah. of a true DC Comics costume change that just impacted the character and, oh my God. And also impacted the readers. And if you think about costumes, it's hard not to bring up cosplayers who then now, how many more Batgirls do you see? Not that the old Barbara Gordon Batgirl costumes weren't easy to do and you don't see them in abundance, but the Burnside Batgirl was so iconic. And you also see a whole younger generation who Mm -hmm. want to be her because she's a little bit more easy to, not, not easy, but you know what I mean? Like, like, you can get her cosplay elements. Like, you yeah. can buy those Doc Martens. There's a whole breakdown courtesy of Babs Tar. Yeah. You can do a snap-on cape. Yeah. I I had to do a, a costume one time where I did a snap-on cape. And I'm like, this is such a faux pas. No superhero has a snap-on cape. But, but now. Like, now. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 yeah, Doc Martens and a motorcycle jacket. Yeah. You, you – this, this is a – exceptionally grounded superhero costume as and, well. And while they didn't make the list, there are several DC comic characters who have since followed suit. Like if you think about it, Black Canary would have never had her upgrade uh, to a more practical outfit if it weren't for the Burnside outfit. Like yeah. her outfit, who designed it? Is that? Yeah, I want to say Annie Wu. Yeah. Um, um, but I know the, it was the, the same blue, era as yeah. kind of, are we talking about the same kind of time as 
Babs Tar Batgirl. It was a little bit after. It's the blue look that she dons the blue now with the moto jacket, blue or the leather, m- blue with the leather jacket and like the black shorts and the belt and the stockings that way. I want to say that was Annie Wu. Okay, um, that makes I will, sense. I will double check and uh, if needed, I will update the blog when we post this. Perfect. Uh, but, but yeah, I feel like besides. Um, this being an iconic outfit, it also paved the way for a lot more to to follow suit and update their costumes yeah. and looks as well. Yeah. So there we have it. I mean, so many of these characters had to go through a lot of lot of changes before they kind of hit the sweet spot. And who knows, they might change even further. But these were some really cool uh, upgrades to show off how their powers change and how the attitude to the comics change. Yeah. So to recap our list, number 10 on our list is Batman. Number nine is Green Arrow. Number eight is Catwoman. Number seven is Poison Ivy. Number six is Harley Quinn. Number five is Superman. Number four is Wonder Woman. Number three is Starfire. Number two is Nightwing. And number one is Batgirl. So, was our list totally in fashion? Or was this list of costumes a total wash? If we miss someone that you think should be on the list, be sure to check out our blog and send us your opinions at podcasts at geeksideshow.com. And that was our top 10 costume changes in DC Comics. Do you enjoy the Geek Culture Countdown? We are proud to bring you pop culture content completely ad-free, but that doesn't mean we don't need your support to help keep us going. Please take a moment to leave us a five-star review on iTunes, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting platform and help spread the word about our podcast. We welcome fan feedback. Email us at podcasts at sideshow.com with your thoughts and suggestions for how we can make our shows even better. Plus, tune in for our other pop culture podcasts. See your favorite comic and film characters evolve across two generations in the bi-weekly Then and Now podcast. Hear exclusive interviews with celebrities and pop culture industry leaders as they let their geek side show in Look Who Showed Up. Then get all the latest pop culture news with our daily briefing, a two-minute breakdown of all the biggest geek headlines perfect for your Alexa or Google News briefings. We wouldn't exist without your continued support. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to let your geek side show.